Lewis Tan, how are you? I'm good, brother. How are you, man? I'm very well, mate. Very well. Now, I was looking at your uh, IMDb or Wikipedia, uh -huh. whatever it was, and I saw born in Manchester. <laughs> That's right, baby. A Manchester United fan until I die. Um, Mad for it, mate. Mad for it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's always funny because people, you know, people uh, have it, have a funny reaction to Manchester, especially people from England. You know, they're always either like, oh, sorry for you, or like, you know, uh, just, you know, it's a rough part of town where my mom's from, Salford. But um, yeah. I'm proud to be from Manchester. And uh, that geezer in England. the new Mortal Kombat movie, mate, is from Manchester. <laughs> He's mad for it. You know what? I was in the <laughs> Manchester Evening News, and my mom oh, was yeah. prouder than that, than anything that I did. It didn't matter if it was GQ or Esquire. She was like, the Manchester Evening News. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, there you go. We got there, finally. Oh, lots to talk about, it. mate. All you've right. been doing a fantastic job with with uh, all the action films. You've been doing all the martial arts. You're the new generation. You're going to be taking my jobs away from me soon. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey, you know, I look up to your work, you know, so it's it's an honor for me to talk to you. And it's also like, um, yeah, it's great to be in the conversation, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a student of the game for life. So that's how I look at it. And I follow guys like you and all the guys that came before me, you know, and um yeah, I, I uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be in this position and try to represent the best I can. I can see that, mate. Yeah, it comes across for sure. Um, I know your dad is a very successful stuntman. He's from England. I've seen him in so many movies. Have you guys art. met before? But never met your dad. No, never. Okay, Although that's we've, crazy. We've that's crazy. The messages on Facebook. I've become his Facebook friend. Okay, but uh, I've never yeah, he's met still him. At Facebook. He's a you know he's a little old school. He's still at Facebook. yeah. It wasn't on TikTok. <laughs> okay, no, uh, it's kind of crazy that neither of us have came have worked together at this point because I feel like we should have already. But um, but yeah, he's you know he's been in the game a long time. You know he's done a hundred different movies. He's worked with Spielberg and Tim Burton and uh, Peter Sellers, and you know he's a he's an old school martial artist. It comes from way back in the day and. Um, you know, he was the British national championship in 1985 for Taekwondo in England. Oh, yeah. Is that his um, main star was Taekwondo then? Yeah, Taekwondo and Muay Thai. He moved into Muay Thai after that, won a lot of uh, tournaments. He's, uh, yeah, he's a legit um, martial artist and, a, and, um, and one of the OG stunt veterans, you know. So I got to grow up around that. So it had a huge influence on me, obviously absolutely well look yeah. check this out i was looking for some uh some of your dad's work now i know this isn't the best the okay, best well. can you see that okay yeah, let's see but here he is it's it's martial law chad mcqueen there oh Steve my hey look he's pretty ripped here he could still yeah. literally do this yeah man got the moves coming at him with the heat Dude, i haven't seen this in forever this is crazy here we go. The good old 90s uh, martial arts action films. I used to lap this stuff up as a kid. See, for all those people wondering why I'm always shirtless, this is where it comes from. <laughs> Love it. See, oh, good technique. I've seen the, the taekwondo there. That's a nice, lovely back kick here, look. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's almost like that question mark kick, but taekwondo style. Look at those lats. Amazing cat stance. Jeez. Yeah. I'll tell you what makes me laugh though. They've they've stunt doubled Chad McQueen here. Look, 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 I know, I can see it. That's but hilarious. the guy that does it is 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 worse than Chad McQueen. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, mate. I don't know who you are, but I, I don't know either, but that is look, he didn't even pull yeah. his leg all the way through. He just left it there. No, he's gotta to, gotta to work on his uh spinning sweep there. But there you go. Jeez. But I just want to talk about this because I'm a huge fan of Tango and Cash and yeah. This, I guess this was one of your dad's first American movies. I'm guessing we can talk about it, but I just wanted to show this because I always felt so sorry for him in this part God, of the movie. Let, let me tell you, man, this scene brings back terrible childhood memories because I used to watch this scene and I used to cry when I was a kid. Like cry, man. I just, because I didn't, you know, you don't know what's real and what's not at the time. And I'm like, how is it, how is it fake? I still don't even know how he really faked that. It looked like it's choking him. And um, or he did a fantastic job acting because it was like, 
Yeah, I used to, I remember yeah. watching this and being like, holy shit, that guy is choking my dad to death. And he's never liked Kurt Russell since. And since then, <laughs> if ever I see that, no, but um, he does a stunt in that movie where he jumps out of a second story window uh, through a glass pane. He shoots Kurt Russell through the glass and he runs and he jumps out the window uh, without looking. He just runs like blind, ju jumps out the window, two stories high, lands on top of a car and then sprints off that car onto the floor and continues running all one shot. No, you know, no cuts, no wires. And I was always like, damn, that was crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, my dad's a, he's a force. So you grew up on, on the film sets and how old were you when you really got into the martial arts and, and how old were you when you decided you wanted to get in, in front of the, the, the cameras and be an actor? Well, he's been training me since I was a kid. So when I was young, you know, he was teaching me martial arts. There's photos of me and, you know, four or five years old and sparring gear and learning, learning different techniques and stuff. Um, it's integral. To, it was, it was just part of life. There was, you know, I, my dad would sit and stretch in front of a TV and be watching, you know, uh, you know, Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee and, and Donnie and all these guys and Samuel Hung and, and I would just sit and watch with him, you know, and he'd just be stretching and that was his normal daily routine. He'd watch like a movie a day and he'd stretch in front of the TV and then we'd do some martial arts. And that was kind of like a time that I got to bond with him, you know? So it was, uh, just something that was part of my life and I didn't really think anything of it, kind of like playing sports or anything. And, um, and until I got older and started to fall in love with the philosophy behind it, the way that you can um, implement these, these sort of disciplines and techniques into your real life as a man and as, as an actor as well. I think, you know, I started to find more and more how actually priceless it is and, and how important it is in my life as I as I grew older I had more of a respect for it you know well I hope it's going to be that way for my son I guess because I'm certainly in front of the tv stretching a lot watching <laughs> <TV> movies <laughs> I'd imagine so man I'd imagine so and you know I wish there, there was a period of time where I fought against learning martial arts maybe in, in my you know in my rebellious early teens and uh, I fought Remember against Brandon Lee saying the same thing. Really? I didn't know that. Well, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. you know, I, it's just because he's like, oh, you need to train. You need to train. I'm like, why do I need to train? And he's like, oh, you, you're going to need this one day, you know? And I'm like, ah, I'd rather go play with my friends. And, and um, I, yeah, I regret that a lot. There's a, about a four year period where I didn't train any martial arts. So would you say that he was, um, I'm asking for myself, actually, with my son. Mm -hmm. Was he quite demanding that you do you get into the martial arts and train in it because he believed you needed this? And do you think you rebelled against it because maybe you felt it was pushed onto you too much? Yeah, that's about right. I think yeah. I think I I did. He was quite demanding about it, and you know he turned that it turned out to be correct. You know I do I I I, I used it to get my foot in the door in Hollywood. I you know I've, I've used it to position myself in such a way. Uh, to get roles like Mortal Kombat and so he he was correct in a way but yeah I, I did I hope I you've apologized before. to your dad <sighs> yeah <laughs> I mean numerous I mean he's always he's always you know got to hold that over my head like I told you so uh, you know <laughs> so and he's right and 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 not only is he right I I love it I love it and I'll teach I'll teach my kids one day as well you know Yeah, from a young age, I wanted to act. Um, I started acting. I did, you know, small little roles uh, in different projects. And then I, I was getting, you know, little co-stars here and there. Um, but like my father told me and warned me when it, before, I was going to theater school and I was doing commercials and stuff and, you know, getting little parts on Disney shows and just little things. And um, he was like, look, if you want to do this, you're going to face a lot of opposition. There's not a lot of roles for Asian actors and, you know, you're going to have a really hard time. And you do need to learn martial arts because that could help you get a foot in the door, help you get an edge over the other people, you know, who don't necessarily have this skill. And I was always like, Dad, I'm, you know, I don't want to do that. Let me let me go to drama school. I can make it without having to do, you know, action films or martial art films. And I just had something to prove, you know, and. It was one of those things where I wanted to kind of make pave my own way. As I got older, I started to realize like, look, this is actually a gift that I have here. And this is something that I can use 
and I can get my foot in and I can then from there develop however I want to develop. And um, it just so it just turns out that I, I love this. And um, whenever I do roles that don't have action in it, I'm always I have a good time, but I'm always I'm always like, well, the next one, I hopefully we'll get back in. And, you know, it's just it's it's fun. It's addicting and it's um, it's expression. It's a beautiful way to express. And uh, yeah. I love movies like that. So I love being part of those films, too, you know. Yeah. So was the, your first jobs acting or? Like, my first uh, few jobs were just exactly. acting yeah, yeah. And, and then after that it was stunts just was stunts. stunts because your dad's obviously heavily into the stunts even though he started as an actor he's a stunt coordinator now isn't he so yeah that's right but i mean don't don't and don't anyone get it twisted he made me earn my position in anything i did and there was no like free handouts you know I, if i was gonna like work for my dad for instance um i would have to you know meet his qualifications. I had to learn high falls. I had to learn Russian swing. I had to learn, uh, obviously martial arts, how to take hits, how to, uh, you know, do all sorts of stuff until he was like satisfied with my abilities. Then he was like, okay, I'll give you a part, you know, ND stunts in the way background. <laughs> and then that's how I started. And it, you oh, know, it wasn't like, awesome, there's no man. free handouts. Yeah, that's cool. So you've got loads of skills then. Well, yeah, I can do those things. I haven't done those things in a while, but yeah, I mean, I can, I've, I've done like 50, 60 foot high falls, done all sorts of different, you know, hits, reactions and stunts uh, that people may not have known um, for different movies. Well, we can talk about this because you're doing fantastically. Your star is rising with every film. But did you ever feel like there was a danger of of being seen as a stunt performer and being pigeonholed as that and not being able to get out of that because obviously you're an actor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was a time that I don't remember when exactly it was, what year it was, but there was a, there was a year that I had done every guest star on, in, on every CSI city possible. And I played every gangster that there was possible. I've, I had like, you know, eight or nine different stunt credit films under my belt. And I was getting calls to start down that road of three, four months on a stunt job. You know, all the stunt coordinators knew me. I was acting and I was going to, uh, to, to drama school for like eight, nine years. And so they knew that if they threw me a couple lines, I do a good job, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I was going down that road. And I remember the year, um, that year, I said to my dad, I was like, look, that's it. I'm, I'm quitting. I'm telling all the stunt coordinators I'm done. I don't, I don't do stunts anymore. And he was like, that's a terrible idea. Just keep acting until you get the role that you want. And then you can tell everybody that. And I was like, no, I just feel like in my, my gut is telling me if I go down this road, I know where it's going to lead. And no disrespect to that, to people who do that. It's, fan, it's a fantastic career, but it wasn't my career. It wasn't what I wanted. And um, there's I, a perception, I though. It's it's the uh, the producers and the perception of of how you're 100%. seen. If that's all they see you as, you know, it's wrong. It's not 100%. right. But that's just it's the way status. it is. Yeah. It, it's not right, but it's status on set. And when you're on set and you're meeting producers, you're meeting directors, they become familiar with your face as a stunt man. Even if they go, yeah, you know, he's a He's a, he's a good actor, but he's a stunt man. Um, it becomes some, and then that's the road you go down. And I, I just, that, that wasn't the one that I wanted to go down. God, this is so hard to do by the way too. You know, you watch like Jackie Chan and you're like, like yeah. doing drunken boxing and drunken anything is so intimidating. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it is. I, I only when I'm pissed. <laughs> only when I'm drunk. <laughs> only in real life. That I can do. Yeah. No, it's great. I love the ooh, all this business. Now, I you're you're just fighting this stunt double mostly, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit frustrating. I mean, I'm pretty. I try to stay on the fence a lot of the time, but I'm sure he's a lovely guy. But I'm sorry. Why is he playing Iron Fist? Yeah. Well, that was the that was part of the controversy, you know, and and um. I think that <laughs> that's not. I good. think that I think that if you're going to do this type of show, I mean, come on, he's supposed to be 
the greatest martial artist in the Marvel, you know, universe, um, or one of the greatest martial artists in, in the Marvel universe, top three at least. You know, you gotta learn some abilities, and 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 and, and I'm, I don't care about this excuse of like, oh, I only had three days to to prepare for my series. And it's like, come on, mate. It's hard to, you know, don't want to give him grief and I don't want to lead you into this road, but it's just very frustrating because there are so many people out there that can do it and are willing to put the effort in. And yeah, there's yeah. absolute. I remember thinking at the time, there's no reason why Iron Fist couldn't be an Asian or Asian American. Well, that's, that's where the controversy came from because I spoke to a magazine and I wasn't even trying to stir the pot. I was just like, I'm Asian American and I always feel like an outsider in America. And I always feel like an outsider in Asia because they look at me like I'm white. But when I'm here, they look at me, you know, I, I feel like an outsider in both places. And that was the whole point of the character. He's supposed to be this outsider in this world, but how cool would it have been to see a mixed Asian go to, back to Asia, have no idea about these martial art roots and discover the beauty in his culture. And like, you know what I mean? And so that's what I said. And I wasn't trying to say that it needed to be this. I was just trying to say that, you know, maybe one day and then, you know, yeah. all hell broke loose. But, you know, even more than that, it's like, come on, Marvel's martial arts hero. You've got to get someone that can do the business. You've got to get yeah. it. Otherwise, that's a massive part of who the character is. You well, can't here's the thing. neglect that. As you know very well, you get to shoot things differently when the you know the actor can perform. Like if you look at that scene, you know, he's got a hoodie on for a reason. If you look at a lot of the scenes, they're very they're shot in a way that they're cornered into a hole with how they can shoot because of the limited ability. So yeah. The yeah, editing sort of, becomes choppy. The choices of angles we can use is, is not there. It's got to be right. over the shoulder, back of the head, make sure the hood didn't come off to see his face. Yeah, You can't exactly. connect with the performer and flow with the camera and make a beautiful sequence. Right, and Chad Stahowski has a really good quote about that. And um, hopefully I don't butcher it, but it's something along the lines of, there's a good way to fake not being good, and that's being good. Yeah. And so when you look at someone like Keanu Reeves or Charlize Theron or Halle Berry, us as lifelong martial artists, when we see the amount of work and effort that they put into those scenes, those films, you know, you could do nothing but tip your hat to those guys because that's what you need to do. That's what's expected. And if somebody doesn't put that amount of effort in, it's kind of, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. It's not what I want to do personally in my career. You know, I want to try to like push the boundaries and, and, and break new grounds. Like, like you're saying, right? Like all the guys who, who you looked up to and who I look up to and, you know, um, just down, down the ladder, you don't want to just try to, you know, emulate other people. You want to try to create something new, something different. You know, it's, it, it might not be better than, than, than their stuff or, you know, these great classic martial artists and martial art films, but you at least want to try to make your own stamp on things. And I, I, I hate laziness and I feel like it's laziness when people go, oh, I just, I only had a few days to train, to learn a whole bunch of fights for a, um, an action movie. Are you kidding me, man? Like, that's why I stay in the gym. I stay training because the next opportunity is going to come and I need to be prepared for it. I look at my work in these other projects and I go, damn, you know, this is not good enough. And then I, you know, I look at guys like you and Joe Taslam and Eco, and I'm like, I, I need to be, be better. I need to learn how to, you, you know, continuously progress. So that way I can, I can, I can make my own sort of stamp and I can, I can, I can be proud of my work when I look back on it, you know, and um, it's important to do that. Yeah. Stay ready. And look, if, if you're an actor and you get offered a martial arts role, then you better think carefully about taking it. <laughs> because if you're not up to the task, people like me are going to be like, no, 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 come on. Give it to the people who, who, who really want to do this sort of thing. Or, well, people know the difference yeah. nowadays. They can see the difference. And a lot of it gets called out. And, you know, I think 
it's good that you're doing this type of podcast and it's good that these conversations are happening at least because people can start to get an inside view on what it takes to do this. Did, did they know that Halle Berry lived with those dogs for six to eight months before she shot that movie just to do that scene? I mean, yeah. and that's just, that's dedication. That's, you know, Keanu Reeves has been training uh, you know, been thrown, getting thrown on his head for the last few years just to learn how to do judo with these guys. Like this is, yeah. this is top level stuff. And, you know, it's 20 years of martial art experience for me. And, and that's, that's what goes into Mortal Kombat and these type of movies that you don't need to have a fight double. There's no fight double because I put in the years to do, to earn that. And, and um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, toot my own horn. You know, I'm just saying that like, that's important to 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 showcase that type of work, that type of. Well, look, you, you have to love it. A action movies are hard, man. Yeah. Martial arts movies are the hardest. You're smashing the shit out of each other day in day out. If you don't love that, you, you don't do it because no matter how much we love it, I know there's been some times in in your career so far where you're like, Jesus, I can't yeah. do this. This is too difficult. Let's not do another take. You know, all these things go through your head. If you don't love this and come at it from that angle, you know, you're looking for a way out. So yeah. it's not the faint hearted. You, you've got to love this shit. A hundred percent. You have to love it and you have to respect it. And um, and I think that uh, if you love it and respect it enough, then you'll be good at it. And you will you will make movies and make shows that, you know, are groundbreaking. And that's that's what I'm here for. Into the Badlands is filmed in Ireland, right? That's right. Now I'm there in, in England thinking, what's this martial arts TV show they're filming just over the water there? They're bringing all these Americans over. What about me? Yeah, uh -huh. man, oh man, you would have been perfect for it, jeez. I was, I was trying to say to uh, Daniel Wu, but I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm not quite sure that me. didn't ever pan out, but that's, um, there was, uh, yeah, they flew the whole Hong Kong team out there. So they were like, I mean, that like this is why Into the Badlands was very unique. And you would have loved working on that show because, sorry to rub it in, but because, yeah. <laughs> because oh. they brought the Hong Kong team out and they had a whole uh, unit. So if people don't know, there's usually a first unit and a second unit. And the second unit is like most of the action gets shot on the second unit. Uh, but in this case, our first unit was the action unit. And our second unit was the drama unit in a way that they <laughs> yeah they gave yeah. more time and more attention to the action unit and they did it the hong kong way they shot it they were editing on set they had all the hong kong guys out there and uh the old school wire work everything you know so this very first shot is a beautiful shot oh yeah it's the cinematography is pretty amazing in this the production design too they did a really great job. That's Dean Charles Chapman, who's the lead in um, 1917. He's another British lad from Essex. And so he, he doubled um, a lot then. He actually did this entire thing himself, but he's a ballet dancer. Right. Well, and um, Daniel had us training every day, pretty much. So he, I don't think that kick was him, but everything else was him. So a sequence like this, how long did you have to, to film it? Just the sword fight bit, so we get an idea. Three hours. Oh, really? Oh, come look, on. Look at this shot. That's like, that, that was like 25 moves in one take, 30 moves in one take. But there's a lot of setups here, isn't there? There's a lot of different angles. Yes, there is. But like I, like I was saying, so this is, this is Master Didi and Stephen Fung directing this and Andy Chang. And right. um, they shoot this, and you know how these guys work, man. They're fast. So that whole well, fight. But can probably... you push the crew? Can you push the crew that that fast in in a place like Ireland? <laughs> you 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 can on second on on our first unit, our our action unit, because um, those are all the Hong Kong boys. They're used to that pace. So... Right. But what about you know the the grips and you know the electricians and all this are they moaning about things well i joined in england they would be yeah i joined season three so at this point everybody was already oh. kind of in a nice flow and they yeah, this knew is the way it is if you don't like it go home 
yep. by that point. And it yeah. was, it was, a, it was a tough one too. So yeah, for me, I think, um, we shot that whole fight scene in, yeah, I'd say like four hours. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Cause as you know, it's, um, it's the mosaic of getting the mosaic, the different pieces to put together to make an impressive fight scene, right? You, you need, you need the coverage, you need the different choices of, of shots. And every time you move that camera, you got to relight, you got to set it up. So yeah, it's difficult. And that. That's why, that's why on some, uh, fights you just you know you, you see the same shot again and again and again regurgitated and it's a lot less interesting but it, it's it's quicker to do that right yeah and um also you know the endurance that it takes to to keep that up nice kick down here obviously on a wire but yep stuck it to him so her stunt double is michaela um i'm sure you've worked with michaela or know michaela who doubled she doubles uh black widow and she doubled um wonder woman gal gadot yeah um she's an incredible martial artist she makes me look terrible oh it's all good stuff yeah this is brilliant to have hong kong action in a in a tv show i mean i suppose we haven't seen it since martial law that was the whole uh, point of this series was just right. to put a, this Hong Kong style wire work in action in a Western show. That was a little wire wrap. So how come we didn't get a season four? I'm not sure, man. I, I it got good. It got good ratings, got great reviews. Um, it was, it's difficult to make. It was an expensive show to make. You know, you got all the Hong Kong team out there. I was in Ireland for 11 months. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a hectic show to make, which is a shame. I was in I was in England for eleven months, thinking, "When's my phone call?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell them. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we if if there is a season four, <clears throat> got to get Scott Atkins on it for sure. When you're doing Hong Kong style fight choreography, or you're working with a Hong Kong team, a lot of the choreography gets made exactly in the moment you're there on set. Some of it is prepared b before, but then they change it and it's in the moment, right? And so you have to be able to do 10, 15, 20 different moves that you just learned, like five minutes before. Forget about three days. You only had three days. Full speed too. That, like that happened often, quite often. I would say 60% of the time. So if you're not prepared for that, then how will you ever be able to do those type of, you know, shows and make it look good? Even with something like It Man 4, which was big budget, you know, it doesn't matter what the budget is, that, that's just the way it's done. Um, mm -hmm. I spent two weeks training with the stunt guys, learning a fight sequence. And then when I got to the set, it was all changed. It was completely yep. different. And I was but practicing I a gag on a, on a wire the day before, and I tore, I pulled a muscle in my hip. And we didn't even we didn't even do the wire gag. It's like, well, that was pointless. You just injured me for no reason. But yeah, <laughs> that's the way yeah. it, that's the way it is sometimes. Yeah, you know, that's the way it is sometimes. Um, unfortunately, but but they weren't using a previs on Into the Badlands, or they were. No. no, so he's coming up with it there on the spot and just checking that. Yeah, that works. Yep, exactly like they do in Hong Kong. They just you know look at the environment. What can we use here? Oh, this table. Yeah, all right. We we'll use that. What's over here? Oh, this. You know, put put. You know, it's it's very creative. It's very, um, you know, like Bruce Lee talks about about being water. It's very flowy and adaptable. And I I, I love that. I'll tell you a little story about that. When I was yeah. making Wolf Warrior with Wu Jing, uh, Nikki Lee was the the stunt coordinator, fight coordinator. They come up with a gag where I get shot on the edge of this little uh, drop is about 10 foot and I turn around and I see Wu Jing and I'm going to shoot him and he shoots me in the shoulder and they say oh yeah we'll have you fall off there it's only about 10 feet we'll put some boxes down but they didn't have any boxes but what they did have was a couple of thin mats so I've got one thin mat for me with some uh, guys down there waiting to catch me and then there's another mat for the uh, the real gun because you know it's not rented or anything it's it's been given to them by the army it's like you, you've got to make sure you don't Drop the gun. Your gun's got to land in the mat. Very, very important. I'm like, okay, okay. So react, react to the gunshot. Uh, fall back in my mat and drop my rifle in this mat here. I was so concerned with 
getting the gun into the mat, but I actually missed the mat. <laughs> oh. Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm playing the same character. So the so the characters are the same, but it's completely different world. And um, not only is it a different world, it's like just way bigger and took all the things that we liked in Wu Assassins that worked and the things that didn't, we just left them. And we just made a really insane action film with wow. motorcycles and boats and cars and um, all sorts of different, you know, gun stuff, explosions, martial arts. Wow. Uh, we shot all on real locations in Thailand, which- This was Rule there. again, was it? This was Rule. Yeah. And this is Rule- Again, again I, was sit I was sitting in Birmingham thinking, where's my phone call, Rule? Oh my God, <laughs> man. We had the best time. You would, you know, you, you, I'm sure, uh, know about filming in Thailand and just, we had the greatest time there ever. Um, I worked with Rule in Thailand, Hard Target 2, we did together. That's right, man. He yeah, brought, yeah. he brought it up many times. Yeah. And um, I love that film. And uh, he's no stranger. I mean, so you know how fast he works and how he shoots it all himself. And it's very impressive. He's the most oh organized director that I've ever worked with in terms of it's like a military operation. And yeah, he shoots so fast, doesn't he? He's got that zoom lens so he can get more yep. coverage with just the same camera setup. Yeah. And he's his own DP, isn't he? It's pretty impressive. His knowledge of filmmaking is, is I, I'm so impressed. You know, he can, he writes his own scores. He's doing edit, you know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's designing his own LUTs for the cameras. He's, he's got, he's like a one-stop shop. There's few Arturs, film director Arturs. He's, he's one of those guys, man. He's, and he never he stops making in his blood. He never sits down. Yeah. He, oh, he never stops working either. It seems never, to have gone from one project to the next. Yeah, he's amazing. And so they let, you know, Netflix gave us the, the green light for this. And they just said, go, go, go and do it. And we went and we just went full maximum level. I think it's going to make the first Wu Assassins look, look bad. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that's what you want to do, right? You want yeah. to top. You want to raise the bar. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a lot of martial arts in it? I, a ton man a ton so much um maybe even more than mortal Kombat. i i, I want to say I, I i think there's no i don't think there are more fights in this film than there was in mortal Kombat. so that's that's uh that's saying a lot my name's rusty but i go by shatterstar that's good, that's good. Yeah. yeah rusty is definitely terrible so, uh, where are you from? The planet Mojo World. So yeah. you're, I mean, you're an alien. When I was young, I used to train at 8711 with, with Chad and Dave. Yeah. Um, my father worked on a movie called Bloodsport 2 uh, oh. as the fight choreographer, and Chad oh. was in, in that movie. Yeah. Uh, fighting Daniel Bernhardt, another amazing martial artist who I'm sure you know. Yeah, so we, th those are kind of like my uncles, and... Um, I think Dave has been watching my work for a while and, you know, he called me up and said, I, I got a, I got an idea for a character that you can play. And I was in, I mean, you're not going to say no to Dave and you're not going to say no to be part of Deadpool. He gave me a little bit. And then I found out it was Shatterstar. Once I found out it was Shatterstar, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in for sure. This is the weirdest character. He's an alien, you know, he's got the whole, this crazy backstory. And, um, it was good fun. It was great, man. It's great to work with them. Ryan's a real cool guy. Film's fantastic. It's a shame that um that uh <laughs> it's a shame what happened to my character, but it was worth it because it was very funny. Sage left, you idiot! Oh! Oh! Yeah. Well, this was just a fun project that I did. During the filming of Wu Assassins, I had a weekend free and a friend of mine who's a director called me up and said, hey man, you want to come and uh, play with us and do this kind of like alien board fighting thing? And I was like, hell yeah. Can I ask you, do you know how he's achieved this, this shot here, the way it's almost like the camera's attached to you? That looked like it was a zoom lens that was on a steady cam. You talking about this one? Yeah, it's I see got what you mean by it looks like I'm really stable, right? 
it almost looks like, you know, in those movies when they've got a camera attached to the guy's head and everything's moving in the background except for the, the guy's yeah. head. Yeah, oddly enough, it does have that effect, but that's not that. I think that's just a oh. steady cam um, that was very steady at the time. That's so this director cool. knows how to shoot action then, doesn't he? Well, there you go. I mean, look, yeah. look what can be done. Um, so Travis Wong choreographed this and pre it. And, you know, he's a young... Um, fight coordinator, stunt coordinator, stunt guy, parkour guy. And he, they, they followed the previs to a T and look what they got out of it, you know? Looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not, I didn't think it was, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Whenever you do a short film, you're kind of like, you know, I like to take a chance and try mm -hmm. something different, but you never really know what to expect. But it actually came out quite cool. Uh, funny story about this. So when I got to set, you know, I hadn't had a chance to look at anything because I was busy shooting Wu Assassins. When I got to set, um, they had these swords that they had made and they were these alien swords and they were like eight or nine pounds, maybe 10 pounds. And they were long and they were made of steel. And I was like, what is this? I'm like, how are we supposed to have a big sword fight with this? This is this is impossible. And they were like, what do you mean? You know, and I'm like, this is not going to work, man. Um, we can't swing these at each other's heads. You know, Peter over here, who did a fantastic job. Um, he's not the most experienced martial artist, although he did a fantastic job here. But it, it, anything could happen. If we hit each other with these swords on the hand, we chop a finger off. Yeah. I mean, literally, you're done. And um, so they panicked and then they went and they bought those those rubber <laughs> ninja swords. <laughs> and they, it turned they out looked fun. okay. They looked okay yeah. to me. They look good, right? I didn't question it. I've, I've, yeah. I've worked with some swords in the past where I've gone, no, no. This isn't. And when you're there with the thing, you're probably thinking, oh, this is going to look crap. But once you're swinging them around, I can't tell. Exactly. And a lot of people have, you know, uh, a, a lot of props and, and directors, they come up with these, you know, great ideas, but then they're totally not practical or usable. And uh, well, hang, hang on a minute. So when when the sun catches it here, is that added afterwards? Because that looks pretty real to me. That's a uh, that's an effect. Is it really? Yeah. So that's what sells it, you see. Yes, you're right. And I didn't even notice that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm here good, for, man. Yeah, <laughs> they did a good job with these effects. Yeah, it's cool, man. It was a fun little project. Yeah. I had to swing some swords around. Anytime I get to do something different like this, I'm I'm like, this is unique. And um, I always like to do sci-fi stuff. I think it's really cool. I know that you were up for the role of Shang-Chi, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm pretty close to that. So before Mortal Kombat came along, you were in the running and I... I can imagine that that must have been soul destroying when that didn't go your way, right? Uh, well, you know, it was um, it was soul destroying in, <laughs> in many ways because so as an Asian actor, you don't get these opportunities very often. So when you when you come across an opportunity like to play Shang Chi's character, he's supposed to be Asian American and he's a martial artist. When you get something like something that already suits you really well and it's with an incredible studio like marvel of course your your levels of excitement are through the root because this is a rare opportunity and then you know when you actually start auditioning and getting callbacks and you know meeting producers and getting you know your schedule you know put on hold and this and that and just getting close yeah it's 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 pretty it's pretty gut wrenching when you lose the roles, but that's life, man. That's mm -hmm. life, and and I believe that what is meant to be yours will be yours, and and you know something that you got to just deal with over time, and and uh, thankfully, you know um, things worked out for the best. Because I look back on that project, and if I would have done that, I wouldn't have would have been able to do Mortal Kombat, obviously. And um, I look back on it and I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that it panned out. But you hear that with a lot of actors. It's just a step closer to getting your shot. You know, you, you didn't get that one, but it's coming. You're getting closer, you're getting closer eventually. 
you're going to yeah. get something that's going to uh, give you, you know, a chance to, you know, the star of Mortal Kombat. Amazing. Yeah. And it's been wildly successful. Yeah, it has been. And, and it's just the experience, you know, everyone, I think, you know, with, with acting, it's, it's tricky because you are taught to invest every part of your being into this character and, in, and into this role. And you have to convince yourself that you're good enough to do it. If you're not convincing yourself that you're good enough to do it, you're never going to succeed. So you have to almost trick yourself and put yourself in a mental state where you know you can get this role and you know you're talented enough, you know you're good enough, and you have to do the best work possible. And then here's the catch. You have to detach your emotions from potentially losing this job. You can't be soul crushed afterward or, and stay in that state for a long time. And so that's, that's this weird catch 22. Yeah, with you. But how can you not be? How can you not be? And you've you put so be? much you of yourself said. into it and you've tried your best and then you're waiting by the phone right. like, please, please, please. And you know, when you, you can't exactly stop thinking about it. I just yeah. forgot about it. It's like, come on, man, be yeah. honest. You know, there's no one in, in their right mind that can put that much effort into something and then not feel the pain of, of yeah. losing a job, you know? Um, but what's meant to be yours will be yours. And I believe that. It's all part of it though, because you need a tough exterior as an actor. You've got to put up with all the internet trolls and this and that. And, you know, not everyone's going to love you. You're always going to get some online hate. But I feel like that whole audition process and losing out to other people and being vulnerable in the room and not getting the job, it's, it's all just building you up to be ready for the, uh, for the yeah, rest 100%. of it when you make it. You're hundred percent right. And it's, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's actually a beautiful part of the process. You know, I, I really believe that. I think, um, although it's painful in the moment, it's a beautiful part of the process because it makes you strong, very similar to martial arts, man. You get in the ring, you take a couple cracks and you're like, okay, this is, um, I don't like that feeling, but I'm going to be better now. I'm going to get better. And I, I, I love that. I love the motivation. Yeah. Get toughened up. I remember the first review I read about myself and it wasn't good. It was not good. And it was like, oh, like i had been stabbed in the heart. I was like, Jesus, this is terrible. Ooh. Now I'll just read something negative about myself. And I'm like, hey, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It, it, like like you said not not everyone's gonna like you if you someone who knows martial arts and, and knows the game if you got to know me and you saw my work and you said hey this was shit i would it would it would mean more to me and it would it would it would hurt more because i know that you know you know yeah. what i mean i don't know what these yeah. they know chris critics half these critics don't know anything half these critics just started writing on a blog like six months ago it is funny you bring that up because I've been meaning to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So see you later. Yeah. End of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're doing a fantastic job, mate. Brilliant. I love a good martial arts film, especially a, a, a nice big budget one that's had a bit of care and attention. Yeah, yeah right. Funny. What was your favorite Fantastic. fight in that movie? You can be on it. You're on this, you know. You know, it's it's funny because for some reason I'm I'm not quite sure why, because I haven't analyzed it, but I really enjoyed you your fight with Goro. Nice. Right? I really yeah. enjoyed that. Now normally yeah. I'd be going, ah, I don't want to see him fighting the CGI guy and all the rest of it, because I prefer to see Mano to Mano. But yeah. something about that fight was really cool. And I, yeah. also it was really violent. And obviously that character's just a lot of fun. But yeah. I, I like that, man. I appreciate you saying that because it was that was a hard one. That was, a, was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And I didn't think it was going to be hard uh, because, again, I've never fought a CGI, anything CGI. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's two guys dressed up in suits, one on, one on stilts, two stunt guys, and one underneath him. And these and we're going at it. How you right? get in the forearms? Yeah, it was like it fighting mind. two people at the same time and having to learn how to uh, memorize the reactions of where I'm getting hit, as well as the choreography, but not just with two two limbs, but with four at the same time. So it was. Yeah, you know, I bet it, that was a bitch to choreograph. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was that was crazy. And then um, 
yeah, the wire work and the getting slammed around. And, but if you look at the shots, you can see when I get thrown across the floor and it doesn't cut because it's me and I get up and it's like, but, but, and, 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 and not just to say that it's me, it holds you in that emotion for the story. So you get to feel the, 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 the pain and the, how long this is dragging on and you get to see the reaction as I'm, as I'm getting up. And that's something that you wouldn't normally get um, with someone who's not willing to do that, you know? So I think there are yeah, important it doesn't, it doesn't storytelling. Break spell. Yeah. It doesn't break the spell with the movie making. Yes, yeah, exactly. Harrison Ford used to be notorious for that, for always wanting, you know, I want you would need to see me land, you know, in the curb close to the camera as the thing blows up behind me because you'll yeah. see the vun, because I can keep acting, I can keep expressing okay. the fear of the character to the audience. And it's not yeah. going to break the spell. Well, I just want to congratulate you on your performance yeah. because we were speaking about this a little bit before. Tell me to put it on. But you had a difficult task of being the straight laced hero uh, that the audience is sort of like coming through your eyes to, to see this crazy world. And you are having to you know, be the straight man around all these crazy characters, you know, these iconic characters as well, you know, Sub-Zero and Scorpion and all the guys that were turning up wanting to see. And you, you've got a character who's a new character, but we're, yeah. we're coming in, the audience is coming in through you. And it's not easy to play that part. You know, it's a difficult part to play. And I think you did an admirable job, mate. So well done. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Scott. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a tricky one to do. And you're right, it's kind of like, it's a risky thing to play a new character in such a beloved franchise, number one. Um, but yeah, number two, balancing that emotion of being grounded, being vulnerable, not trying to like do too much and steal scenes because you got Kano over here, he's going a mile a minute. You know, you got, you got all these, you know, these big characters um, and you don't want to get lost in that, you know? And so it's very important to, to uh, kind of find that nice balance of being grounded, being vulnerable, letting the eyes speak for itself and letting the audience kind of soak in what you're going through so they can have the best experience in this film, you know? But um, I think, most of all, I was just I was just proud to be able to do um, my own fights and martial arts on a film of this caliber, and I just felt like I had something to show and I, I could bring something to it. You know, this was a crazy fight because this was the first thing we ever shot, and this guy Ian nice Street. Thanks, man. That was a real one. Yeah, looks it. Um, he's a bare knuckle boxer, lethway fighter, legit MMA killer. Yeah. Did he remember that it was uh, not a real fight? <laughs> <laughs> he's the nicest guy. The, yeah. the, such a cool guy to work with. Um, but we we beat each other up. We had to a little bit. Now you you know more about this than me, obviously. But um, what I found interesting about doing this, I've I've never done an MMA fight on camera before. Um. That felt like the most realistic court fight I've ever done. And I think we took the most real hits out of any fight I've done before. And I don't know, was this the style of choreography or the way that the, 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 the movements? I don't know, did you feel, do you feel that way or? I found it more difficult on movies like the two ninja films that I did, for instance, when you're fighting in different locations, you know, on, on hard, unforgiving floor, mm -hmm. and you're having to, you know, hit the floor hard, and you're swinging okay. different things at each other. But I found when I'm doing the Boyka movies, for inst instance, when we're in the, it's, you know, they've always got the, the a lot of light coming down, so it's very warm, body feels nice and loose, and mm -hmm. we've always got the uh, the canvas is, you know, it's padded, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's forgiving. Also, when you do martial arts films and you, you're, you're clothed up, maybe you've got jeans that are a bit too tight, maybe your shoes are a little bit heavier than what you would want. Um, it always makes it a bit more difficult because you're more restricted, aren't you? But yeah, that's true. Boyka, you got your shorts on, you got a top off. You know, like you feel very light and fast and nimble. 
The only yeah. problem is you can't put any pads anywhere. So when you're getting hit by a fist, you're just getting hit by a fist and you're blocking, yeah. you know, skin yeah. from bone to bone and all the rest of it. But I, I did true. find it easier than uh, some of the m movies for that reason. Yeah, well, see, so this this was shot on our on first unit, entirely first unit. There was no second unit coverage, no second unit shots. And um, there was some angles that, you know, that didn't really work unless we made contact, which I don't really like to do. Um, uh, you know, I try my best to not have to hit people, you know, but um, there was some stuff in that that just we just had to do it. There, there was no way around it. So was yeah, it filmed one. in a stereotypical sort of Western way where you're going to get the coverage and we're going to piece it together in the editing room? That's right. Yeah. So you end up having to do more than what you need to do for so each That hour. was a three day nonstop fight. So that's a three day fight. Yeah. Nonstop. And compare I mean, that to, no... the, to the Badlands uh, four hours fight that we watched earlier. Well, it's yeah, it's different, you know. You know, they yeah, you got the you know the, the 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 crowd and they're getting cool. I mean, it's beautifully lit. It's beautifully shot. It looks super realistic. I I think. Um, and um, but yeah, it was a lot of work. And then the canvas was made out of like a the the producer likes to joke if they stole that from an old shipping yard and like ripped it off of a off of a ship because it was just like sandpaper. Sand Oh yeah, no, I've been there. Yeah, we're just throwing each other on this like sandpaper yeah. and just rashes everywhere, ripped up. I mean, uh, Ian, his whole feet, his entire yeah. skin on on both of his top of his feet came, was like came wow. off completely. We had the same thing on Hard Target too with with Raw, and we got on in the ring, and it was sandpaper. Yeah. I was like, I can't do this. But what they did is they lifted it all up and they switched it to the other side, and it was a lot smoother. So, well, they did not do that. Well, that. Now, now, now we know the secret of how to do that. If you ever deal with that again, but uh, they they had it built already, so that was that. We had to just deal with it. You've got got enough experience making action films to know that maybe the coverage way of shooting is probably not the most conducive way to get in the best. Well, getting the best out of the performers and not tiring them out, first of all. Right. Also, you know, to get the best shots, to pick your shots wisely and yeah. do the mosaic, like we'll get this section of the fight, then we'll get this one from this angle and we're editing it as, as we go. Is it, I mean, was it frustrating for you? Or what, what, how did you feel about it? What's the deal? Every process is different. Every time you make a movie, it's different. It's a different environment, different people, different process. And there's no right and wrong way. You know what I mean? Everybody has their own way. Like for instance- But there is. So, what? <laughs> yeah, but there is. Well, here's the thing, right? It's like, you know how people talk about David Fincher and they say, well, David Fincher, he does a hundred takes and you know, you got to get it right. And on the hundred and one take, then maybe he'll use that take. And it's like, well, that's not the traditional way to do it, but his movies are good. Um, when it comes to this situation, you're not going to argue with Fincher, are you? You're not going to say, argue with Fincher, you're, right? you don't know what you're doing, mate. <laughs> right, exactly. So you're going to do the 101 takes. Um, I'm under the impression that I like to, I like to experiment and see, you know, how people do things. Um, and in this scenario, yes, it was frustrating in a way because I grew up around that world. I know what angles are going to work and what angles are not going to work because I've, I've been living that you know, life for a long time. And I know exactly um, what type of angles are going to work and what angles are not going to work and why I'm, for instance, here's, here's a good example for that shot. So when Jax is walking in the building and you see me and Ian in the background and there's no choreography for that part. So yeah. now it's only a split second here on screen, but um, me and Ian, are fighting and we don't want to repeat the choreography so me and ian are having a good go so by the yeah. time they're done shooting, why don't Jack, you want to repeat the choreography so the audience knows yeah because then not you're not going to get it shot nicely uh, that exactly. part of the choreography in the movie exactly they're going to go i've seen that already so so Jax is walking in the audience here and he let's say this took three hours to do okay which is a normal a normal amount of time to get coverage on on an actor me and Ian are in the background fighting. 
So by the time they get around to me and Ian, we've done three hours of fighting already. And we can't be doing, you know, this in the background because you're going to see it. If, and what if they use it? And what if it's on a hundred millimeter lens and you, you see me in the background clearly? Um, it needs to be ferocious. It needs to have the energy. So when you cut to it, it's boom. It's right back in the action. We're athletes. And if you want us to perform at our best ability, you, you've got to help us do that. Yeah. So if let's say there was a crazy kick that you had to do in that fight scene, one that you needed, like you, you needed to be on, on top form to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be doing that after four hours being an extra in the back. That's you know, right. you, want, you want to schedule it like everyone's got to work together as a team. You understand yeah. that the director needs what he needs. But, you know, for us to perform at our best, we, we, we need the help as well. Right. Well, you know, so arguably, you know, 8711 is probably the best in the business to doing doing it right now. And they have a thing where they bring in their camera operator and the camera operator rehearses with the stunt rehearsals. So that way you're not showing up on set and the camera guy going, hold on, can I see that again? Because on the 10th time, maybe he's got it. But by the time you're done shooting the 10th take, you're exhausted. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and this is what happens. I train, you know, for let's just say six months to, to do this thing. And then I get there and the camera guy's seen it once. Yeah, so he's got to learn put his own special spin on it. And he's going to, yeah. I, I'm, the, I'm the operator. Right. I know martial arts. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, it's one of those things where, um, it, yeah, preparation is where this, this is very important. The respect of the martial art game, understanding what it takes to do what we do and how to capture it in the best way, conserve the energy, use it in the right time, in the right moment, in the right angles, and then conserve it the rest of the time. I mean, that's a whole nother art form in its own <laughs> sense, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the Hong Kong operators are so incredible, the way that they can follow the fights immediately, because as we've discussed, it's all made up on the day, but they're yeah. able to think like stunt guys. And it's right. like, okay, the, the knee is coming now and I'm down and I'm back up for it. He's going to punch there. I'm going to zoom in for that punch and everything. They're, they're just yeah. incredible. Yeah. So, you know. A, a lot of that stuff uh, on Mortal Kombat, thankfully, you have a lot of people that really know, um, you know, have a lot of martial art experience. You know, you got, you have Joe Taslam, you have Max Huang, um, Hiroyuki Sonata is no, no stranger to those action films. And um, without that, you're not going to be able to capture these performances without months and months of training in a wide angle like this no I've, I've been there and you know it's uh it's teamwork at the end of the day sometimes you've got, to, you've got to give the director what he wants but also they've got to think about your health and your safety you're the lead actor you need uh you don't want to get injured because then everyone's screwed yeah <laughs> you know the very last fight with Hiroyuki Sonata and me and Joe that's yeah. my favorite fight. That's one of my favorite fights I've ever seen, honestly. This, the visual effects were amazing. The choreography stunning. The way that they told the story in, by that, you know, in that particular scene, using close-ups and wides um, and cutting to me and, and like, you know, these three people, I, I honestly thought it was phenomenal. I, I think it's one of my favorite fights. In this. this fight, I think, is phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. The choreography is unreal. Obviously, they use a lot of this for the trailer, so that was pretty cool. This was also much longer, so this one got cut down by a good chunk that hopefully we get to see more of in the future. Joe Taslam's so good. Great, great stunt work like that there. That was not me. That was yeah. Garrett, um, my stunt double who did that. Um, they got thrown into the wall. Yeah, no, you need to keep yourself safe so you can do the fight. No, I'm not going to do that. I got to fight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, and I, I just got to say, you know, the director of this movie and the producers of this movie had a really hard job. They got to, they got to, you know, take care of so many different characters. They got to satisfy the fans. They got to showcase all these different styles. They had a really difficult job. And the, you know, the, the fight team made so many fights. And so we had all these different previouses. They obviously can't be in all in the movie or else it'd be a five hour long movie, which I'd be fine with. But there was, you know, all these different fights and they had to pick, you know, and choose which ones that they used. So, um, yeah, they 
they did so much work, man. Hats so off. There's a lot of fights that you actually shot, which aren't in the movie or the fights are longer. There's some that. fights that we shot that are in the movie. And there's some fights that are longer that are, that are cut short. You know, the fight with me and the guy in the beginning was three, uh, was two rounds. The fight with me and Max was two rounds. You know, mm. both of them were cut down to one. Well, I was, yeah, there's a lot of fighting in the film. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, wouldn't, and, and I, didn't, I wouldn't say we were short of fights in the movie. <laughs> so. We're short of fights, and you yeah. don't want to get, you know, um, I don't want to say fight fatigue because that's not the right term because I think if they're good enough, you're going to watch them, like yeah. like the raid. Um, if they're good but enough, it depends you're if you're a fight geek like us because not everyone is. Correct. And then and if you the watch movie, a Mortal Kombat, you certainly expect. Family. Well, not necessarily. There's people that, you know, that, that um, have never had never seen the film, never heard of the, you know, the, the game, and they just wanted to watch a cool adventure action movie that, you know, so that's out there too. Uh, but obviously the fans were first and foremost on our mind and, and um, we had a big job to live up to the standard of Mortal Kombat and, um, you know, hopefully we did it justice. We sure tried our best. No, I really enjoyed it, mate. And uh, I hope, I mean, it looks like there'll probably be, uh, be a sequel. So it looks who, like there'll be a sequel, man. And you saw the poster at the end of the sequel, right? So who's going to be Johnny Cage? Then, well, mate? I'm saying, you know, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fans online that are uh, talking about Mr. Atkins over here for uh, Johnny Cage. I don't know. Would you be interested in doing something like that? Well, all I'm going to say is that if they uh, do the sequel and Johnny Cage is in it, just make sure you get a proper martial artist. All right. Okay, guys. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, listen, you can't not. You can't not have it, especially for that role. It's too big of a of a character um, to not to have someone that doesn't know any martial arts. This is going to be a tricky one to teach. Well, that's what I love about the movie is the fact that it's got, you know, all the guys pretty much a real martial artist. And yeah. it just it just elevates it for me. I mean, the first Mortal Kombat, and I really enjoyed that movie. Big fan of it in the 90s. Yeah. But Johnny Cage in that, and I'm not nothing to diss the actor, good actor and everything, but because he wasn't a real martial artist, I'm watching it kind of going, ah, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'll watch uh, Robin Shue and, and all uh -huh. the rest of it. You know, it's Mortal Kombat. I think the fact that it's real martial artists in those roles is... A brilliant yeah. decision. Well, so they, they keep they, it up, guys. Keep they it up. know my vote, man. I've already made it known that you'd be great for Johnny Cage. So that's already that's out there in the in the interview. I said that during press a few times, and I truly do. I think you got the look for it. You got the you, you got the martial arts. Not a beard these days, Johnny Cage. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, man. No. Well, the beard the beard's a good look. Well, yeah, this is for a different character. But anyway, you know. The more you we'll talk see. about these things, the less chance. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I don't want to jinx it or yeah. anything. Well, listen, man, it's great to talk to you. Great to meet you. Yeah, what a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate time. it. And I love watching your podcast. I love, you know, it's just uh, get, getting to hear from all the legends and getting to learn. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm honored just to be on it. I know I have a long path to go. And, and uh, hopefully next time we talk on it, I got three, three four more movies and hopefully they you know, um, hopefully they're good. Hopefully they, they live up to the Scott Atkins standard. Listen, Lewis, you're doing a great job, mate. I can see how hungry you are for it. Yeah, um, I love it. Definitely to listen to you talk about action and how it should be filmed. You, you know what to do. You're a smart kid. Good luck to you, man. Keep it going. Good, you're doing brother. great. I appreciate it, man. It was fun. We'll chat again soon. Okay, buddy. Thanks a lot. Maybe on set.